Hi, it's Stacy with So Steady, and we are back with Mendy and a surprise guest, Jerry Tippett, and they are both going to show us uh, the quilts that they're finishing. Mindy, of course, is finishing our mystery sampler quilt, and she's going to be doing the binding on it right now. So she's showing you how she's doing the binding finishing touches on this quilt. And then we're going to go in, and Jerry's going to do a special live demo for us on the weightless quilter and his queen size Jenny Byer quilt. So we've got some great stuff in store for you. And Mindy, why don't you go ahead and tell us where you've been and what you're doing on this quilt at this point in time. Okay, I think the last time we talked, I was in the middle of finishing the three panels that I added to each side of this uh, mystery quilt in order for this to fit a king size quilt. I added one panel at the very top just for con continuity. Um, what I've done now is I've already cut all the strips for my binding. I did make them the same size as the sash sashing. That's hard to say, same size as the sashing. Sashing. Um, one and three quarter inch. I've uh, taken it and I've uh, folded it in half. And then at the end that I uh, got started, I folded in the raw edge and then I took half of it and uh, took it at an angle so that when I get all the way around, I could slip the end at the uh, inside and have a finished uh, edge there. Um, so, so right now your, your overall binding width is going to be what? Uh, well, basically half. So uh, three quarters of an inch. So one and a half I'm inch. Trying, I'm going to be taking about uh, three eighths of an inch of seam allowance. Okay. So I'm not a mathematician. Somebody else can figure that out. Okay. <laughs> um, but bottom line is it's going to be a skinny uh, binding. And I will tell you that I'm probably um, unconventional in that I don't pin my binding on. Um, I have found that when I uh, pin, I go to all the work of pinning the binding all the way around and I always end up unpinning because I have excess binding. So what I do is just take it a little strip at a time, just go slow and take my time. And uh, then at the end, when I'm uh, taking it for pressing to press to the other side where I'll hand stitch it, I then use the Wonder Clips from Clover to keep those um, all in place so that it's easy for me to do the handwork. But right now, this is just slow, diligent work, and it's a heavy monster here. <laughs> very, very heavy in a very tight quarter. So um, let's go ahead and just get started. And again, this is the king size quilt that you're finishing because you took that mystery sampler, you added three panels to each, to each of the sides and one panel to the top, is that right? That's correct. One yeah. panel to the top and three panels to the bottom side as well. So, and so what I do have here is I have our so uh, so steady grid glider, and it does have the markings. So I'm trying. I'm just shy of three eighths of an inch. So I'm probably actually at a quarter of an inch um, for my uh, my seam allowance. That's what I'm trying to say. But I find that I don't think of this as quite as big and bulky if I look at it in just very small chunks. The first few that I did, it was a little overwhelming and I tried the roll method. I tried a lot of different methods. And this is the one that I'm most comfortable with. So, you know, I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm saying it's the way I like to do it. And I did already go through and trim and make, you know, get my um, uh, quilt all uh, cleaned up and all uh, so that it's all. So even. one of the things that we were going to give away today was is the binding tool by um, Leonie West. And we would do a like, comment and share to be able to win that binding tool. What are some of the things, you know, as you're preparing your binding fabric that that tool is going to do for you? Uh, it does the same thing. Uh, it does the mitered, you know, kind of corners. That it helps you with the, the corner. So cutting the corners into an angle. It's, um, yeah, I, I don't use it. 
I've used it in the past. And actually, it was Donna McCauley that showed me the way that I've ended up uh, binding off all of my quilts uh, for the most part. And I can show that when we get to a corner. Do you want me to pull this down for you? That would be great. I'll have to have it pulled my way in just a minute. But right now, that's awesome. And we are going to come to a corner here very quickly. So my biggest challenge right now is making sure that I have enough fabric up here to keep it from pulling against my three-quarter, thank you, against my three-quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so I'm going to come, I'm coming up to a corner here. And we stop a little ways in advance. So I put this pin right in the corner of my turn. And I'm going to take this binding and then I'm going to do, take it so it's, um, I don't know how to say that, uh, cornering the pin. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to flip it back over and then have it head in the direction of the next uh, turn. Okay. Let's see if I can get the camera a little bit closer. So you're doing a corner right now. I am. Okay. So show us real quick again. All right. Did. So here I am coming up on a corner. Okay. All right. So I take, right before I get to the corner, I take this pin and I put it in at the angle. Okay. And then I take this and I flip it over like this. And then I head it down in the right direction. So you going square it way. off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're basically kind of making a triangle. But right I'm, not, where the pin is. I'm not pinning it so that I'm going to stitch over it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to get, um, I'm going to take that pin out real quick here. I'm going to uh, get it almost to the edge. I'm going to take this up a little bit here. Okay. One more. All right. Now I'm going to back it up. Okay, so I have a good strong, I'm going to cut, now I'm going to turn, keeping that, and I'm going to take my pin and put that back in just while I turn it so it doesn't come out. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this. And now I'm back in business. All right. So now I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to take this pin back out again. And I'm going to come up probably about two to three stitches beyond where I would normally start. Put my foot down and take a stitch. I'm going to back it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to carry on here. So just adding a couple of back stitches then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because really right now what you're doing is you're just doing the, the top of the binding and you still have to do the other side. Well, the other side is handwork. Oh, okay. What I have to do after this is I have to press it flat and then make turn it over and that's when I'll use the wonder clips. But I'm just keeping that right inside that, or uh, just on the outside of that 3 8 inch seam allowance on the uh, seat. On the grid lighter? On the grid lighter, thank you. And I find I'm constantly fussing with the fabric. That's just the way it is. Because but it's do, a big quilt. I do have two extra tables here to help carry the weight. We kind of showed that here. There's a lot of uh, extra tables going on here. 
and I have two tables in the center of my sewing room that I are adjustable and I've adjusted them to the same height as the table so that as I uh, get farther into the quilt, the, that, the weight of the quilt will just land on those tables. And then I can continue sewing without readjusting. Okay, so because you don't want to have, <coughs> I'm sorry, you don't want to have any stress on your needle while you're doing the binding. But I literally would spend an hour, two hours pinning the binding and then I found I was just take you know unpinning it and it wasn't in the right position. So I hate work that feels like it was pointless. I and honestly, that's where I went with this method because I felt so much more productive. <laughs> yeah, and it had the same outcome. Kind of goes back to that wanting to be really efficient, you know? Yeah. Like we only get so much time in this world. Let's make the most of it. Trying to get another a better angle on this second view that might be more of like the right at the uh, needle area where you were showing those measurements and kind of how you were turning sure. corners and that sort of thing. Yeah. I thought that could be a good one. Because my binding is smaller, um, it's really important not to have much deviation in your seam allowance because it will show up on the other side. So just slow and steady work right now. Let's see how this view goes. There we go. Yeah, so someone said they like to do this on their long arm so they don't have to fight it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be nice. yeah. <laughs> so we're getting a close up of the stitching now. And um, so that's helping, I think. And what I think I was thinking we might want to do, if you're okay with it, is maybe we can get you to that next corner yeah. and really show how you turn the corner again. Sure. Oh. I hurt my rotator cuff uh, in October, and I find that uh, doing this work does uh, require a left arm that is fairly functioning. And your binding was cut again at one and a half overall, and then you folded it in half to three quarters inch? No, it's, it was cut at um, one and three quarters. Oh, one and three quarters. Okay. And then you folded it at um, in half okay. and ironed it down, uh -huh. which is what, five eighths each? No. That's a real math moment. <laughs> one and three quarters divided by two ladies. <laughs> oh, but either way, in the end, you're going to add a quarter inch seam allowance and <laughs> it's going to come out to approximately a half inch on each side, maybe. But one and three quarters was the overall width of the binding. I've done it two inches, and at the end of the day, I didn't like the look. It just was it looked too heavy. A little too big. Too big. A little too thick. So again, the binding tool, uh, which Lanny does have a great video on how to use, is going to show you how to create that mitered look. Um, so when you're uh, going, and then it's also going to give you some tips for going around the corners. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. Mm hmm Oh, someone gave us the math. They said seven eighths. So one and three quarters, yeah. Okay, it's getting a little shaky as we 
approach here. I'm getting close to this corner here. Yes, you are. Good deal. Getting close to the next corner, everyone. It really does make pretty quick work then, huh? It really does. Yeah, I I would put up binding my my uh, quilts because of the pinning of the binding and getting just the prep work, you know. And this just simplified it so much for me. Ah, oops. What was the oops about? No, oh. just the dog moment. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up on the corner. Let me get closer. All right, so about here, I'm gonna take a pin. I'm gonna stick it right there in the corner. Okay, hand up on the right. There you go. So you just put the pin in the corner. I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna take it over like this. Okay. Okay, let me get a little bit closer on that camera. So show us again. All right. Close up. Okay. So I'm at the corner. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get this. So you've already let's put the pin in. So I put the pin in. It's exactly diagonal. Then I'm going to take this like this. So you fold it. And then I'm going to take this. Just get it a hold of this side there mm -hmm. and then I've got it directionally going in the right direction okay so now I'm going to take this up like here and I'm pull it the other direction almost like a little dog ear thing going on there mm -hmm. okay I'm going to take my pen out because I don't want to run over it and I'm going to stop right there I'm going to back up a couple come on Now I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to put my pin back in real quick while I turn this because I don't want it to move. All right. So now I'm just turning my quilt, the direction of my quilt. All right. So now we're back down here. And this is another lengthwise one, huh? Correct. Oh no, this is the top. I, well, we I just went across the top. Now we're going along the side. Okay. So now I'm going to take this out. I've got this. I, I have, I do carry the binding around my neck so that I have better control of it. And I'm going to put it back underneath here. And I'm going to start about two or three stitches into where you would normally start. Because I've got to make that corner, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to take that, then I'm going to back up, take a couple of stitches there, and then I'm off and running again. Okay, and this is the pinless version. <coughs> I had some water I thought in here, but I don't see it. We could do a sake moment. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is what they do at the Japanese restaurants. What do they do? They say sake, sake, oh. and you spray out of a squirt bottle. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. It's a little weird. Well, it is. It's part of the experience. Uh, that's where Aiden wanted me to take him for his birthday. We didn't make it happen, though. Next year. There's always next year. I don't think any restaurants are open. 
That's true. We're still in a extreme risk state, everyone. So we don't have schools open. We have no restaurants open here in Oregon. I guess we're in an extreme risk county. <coughs> okay, Sneeze, if you could take straighten that out here mm -hmm. for me. You want to take it this way? Otherwise, I would be getting up and taking that. Like so? Yeah, just pull this up so it's going straight. Oh, there it is. There Perfect. we go. There we go. Okay. Like that. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And then I noticed, too, when you started the binding earlier, you started it about halfway down. Yes. Because you never want to finish never, a binding on a corner? No, never. There's already so much bulk, and uh, you don't want to have that bulk at the corner. Yeah, someone said this, this method's great, but sewing that other side by hand will take forever. It will. But I usually do it when I'm in the car, Jerry's driving. We have to take my mom back down to Ashland. And so I do this as car work. I'm excited to see you in that with that in the front seat. Can you uh, pull that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have, uh, the air conditioning. You might off. have to sit in the back and give <laughs> and give Nana the front seat. <laughs> She'll have the two dogs. <laughs> <sighs> Everybody's just so excited to see the finished quilts. I know last week we really got it laid out for everybody in the live. And um, so you could really see all of the designs and got a, a couple of great pictures of um, that we can post of the overall quilt. Okay, so I think we're we're getting close to ready to head in and have Jerry should show us the demonstration on the waitlist quilter as he begins to quilt his next quilt. Are there any final things that you want to share with everybody? Uh, no, hopefully by the time you check in with me, this thing will be done binding. Oh, and then you'll be ready to show us all? Uh, well, I'll be in the middle of ironing. Okay, we'll come in when you're ironing. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on you for a couple minutes longer while we prep Jerry for his go. All right. All right, so as I said, I, I just take it little steps at a time. Just, you know, get yourself comfortable and uh, makes it not as overwhelming. Oh, man. Here's my mom. Are you visiting from Ashland? Coming and checking on me. All right. We're about to another corner here. So you guys are going to get to see three of the four corners here. Okay. So here we go. Let's just get this. I need all of this to be easy, especially as you approach that corner. You just want everything to be real smooth here. I'm 
All, All right. right, I think we're just about ready. I heard so, Nana came in to say hi. Just quickly. She okay. Ran out just as soon as she figured out that we were still live. All right, well, we're going to go in and we're ready to go into the other room of the house. My dad had to set up another sewing room here. And all right, so here we go. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, in my man cave. And uh, <laughs> what I have here is a quilt that I put together over the last couple of years. Uh, it's a Jenny Beyer design in a queen size. So one of the concerns we had is how are we going to get this quilted in such a large format? So we went to our friends at uh, Dime who market what's called the weightless quilter. And I'll show you how that works. There are probably better videos online that show the actual use and the various options you can use to set up the weightless quilter. But uh, I've got this set up for my particular need. So Okay, so take us around and show us the plan. Well, this is the Jenny Beyer quilt. It's called Echoes. And uh, I just love the colorway, but the reason I came to it is because Mindy was at a, back in the olden days, she was at a quilt show and uh, she picked up this quilt from Jenny Beyer in Echoes, like I said, and the colorway is really pretty. So I found it in the closet when I was looking for something to do and uh, went ahead and put this piece, this together. And uh, I it was, love it. That's a lot of pieces. A lot of, it's a big project. Look at that. And then uh, Donna McCauley, who is one of our educators, was uh, here with us for a few days and she helped me baste it. So rather than use pins everywhere, I don't know if you can see the individual basting uh, stitches. Oh, yeah. But we like went the ahead little and, white stitches. And, yeah, based, based that all along. So when I do my quilting, I can just pull the basting stitches out. Ah, and so are you doing it as you go then? Uh, no, I'm, I think I'll just go ahead and wait till it's done. I'll have a bunch of tie off to do and okay. so forth. Okay. And uh, I went ahead and I've done a couple of these uh, patterns already. And Stacy, you may, I don't know if you can see this stitching or not. I can. Okay. Okay. So what I decided to do, because this is my first quilt, is I use one of my favorite templates. And it's a number 36 spinning wheel. It comes in the original kit uh, for our sampler set. And what I like about it is it's got a, a hole in it right here. I doubt if you can see it potentially, but you can put a, a tack up from below and you can rotate this around, which I've done, creating this uh, nice star And pattern. I think, um, so that's using the quilting rulers. And are you going to show us how to do that a little yep. bit today? Yep. Excellent. And then I decided, uh, I've been getting a lot of help from Mindy on this, thank goodness. And uh, the other thing I can do is leave the pin in place after I've used this inner design, the number 36 spinning wheel. And I can, and I can go to uh, a number 14 and I forgot the name That's of it. That's the spinning uh, wave, isn't it? Uh, no, it's- No, it's the spin and echo. Spin and echo. Spin and echo design. I don't think we've seen a lot of the spin and echo in uh, what we've been doing lately. This so that's is, cool. Yeah, this is really interesting. So mm -hmm. it, here again, it's got multiple holes so you can, you can create uh, larger patterns. I decided that I like the number 11 position the best. I put it over the thumbtack I used for the uh, inner design on the 36. And you just, you just uh, sew around to a point, twist, sew, twist, and it creates a design. I haven't done any, any cleanup on this, but you can see there's a design here. Their design, if you can get over here, Stacy, you can see there's yeah. another design right here. And I'm going through and I'm gonna fill this with this design and those coincide with the center of each one of these uh, oh, cool. designs. So okay. each one of these individual larger squares is going to have that pattern in it. And I'm supposed to have had a full. Uh, so basically after each, I would kind of almost call those like a starburst. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So after each of those, you're tying off. Yeah. I'll tie off on each one of those. Okay. And uh, Mandy suggested I try to find a way of stitching between and not having to tie off so much. In other words, going from this pattern to this pattern without breaking your thread, but I haven't done that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just not that coordinated. So uh, anyway, what I'd like to do next is uh, go ahead and put this on the weightless quilter. Okay, well, we'd love to watch you do that. So let's go ahead and take a step back while he muscles this around, guys. And he is going to now get his queen size quilt on his weightless quilter. You can see that um, he's already kind of put the frame together. 
So when you get the waitlist quilter, I think you get it in probably four or five pieces. Is that right? Right. There are additional pieces that I'm not using in this particular setup. And some of the folks over at Dime, uh, and again, I do suggest you watch their video, but they may have different uh, setups that work even better than what I have had have here. But there are plenty of these rods. There's different lengths and so forth. So you went with the taller rod because of the bigger project. Well, I did. It's a bigger project. And, and the uh, the table I have is it's just a desk that I put a board on. Okay. And then I, um, I've got our giant So Steady table. Uh, it's actually our our wish table, it has the drawer. Mm -hmm. And then I um, set that up around this Janome, and then I'm using our free motion uh, glider, which is this white item. You've probably seen the this. The Teflon pad, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Okay. And then I put that down after adjusting the table to height. Then I used our polish kit to polish everything but the, the glider. I don't like putting polish on before you put the glider on. That's a rule. You yeah. never want to polish polish the table before you put the glider on because sometimes the glider doesn't want to stick. It wouldn't want to stick as well, yeah. yes. Okay, so we've got the whole setup happening here. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, kind of get a good view so we can watch you get this clipped up. So he's clipping the first one. You're just taking one of the corners then, huh? I am for now. And mm -hmm. um, it, obviously you can fold this any place you want. Okay. But um, let's go ahead and fold this one right about here and uh, put that up. And then. So we'll how, how do you decide? Because it's looking like it definitely is excited about the weight on the back. Right. So uh, now once you clip it to the to the front. Yeah, I need to You're get gonna some balance of that, weight. that weight, right? Yeah, I need to get some of that weight off that back there. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and put this together. Okay. And then the fourth side, I don't need to have on a post. That's where I'm gonna be sewing. Now you're gonna be laying that over the table area. Okay. And getting it under the ruler foot there. So it's really a pretty quick setup in comparison to some of the other options, right? Yeah, the key here is to have a nice fluid. Uh, and you don't want that motion. fabric running off the table if you let go of your hands though, right? Right, it seems to be holding okay. The other thing that I did, and I'm still experimenting, is I also do a little woodworking and, and I have one of these, uh, um, oh, it's a Destero or a Bessie clamp. And if you want, you can go ahead and bring up some additional material and I can just clamp it on the on the uh, so steady table. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. Let's see if I can. We got a new a new thing we gotta start sharing. <laughs> a so steady table clamp. Clamp the back side of your fabric. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of similarities to woodworking and quilting. We're learning more about them every day. All right, so we're now going to watch Jerry do some of the quilting and prep. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch cameras, guys. And um, hopefully we've got some better lighting there. There we go. Okay, um, the first thing obviously is to find the center of each one of these larger squares that we are interested in doing. And I, I just kind of eyeball it here. Looks like that's pretty good. Okay. And then I use a, a, one of these in, invisible markers or a type of marker where you can leave a mark and it'll wash out. Mm -hmm. Let's see, make sure I got a good mark there. This might be the hardest part. Yeah, there it is right there. Try a different pen. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and post a link to the waitlist quilter that is on our website as something that uh, you might want to consider for your larger projects, because that does come up quite a bit. You know, we do a lot of demonstrations where we're showing uh, kind of more of a quilt as you go method. But, you know, the, re the reality is a, a majority of us are actually wanting to quilt quilt tops. And... Um, so this is giving you the opportunity to quilt like, you know, full queen king size quilts right there at your, um, you know, at on your home sewing machine with just a so steady table. And again, Jerry was using our giant wish table 
And I can post a link to that as well as kind of the area in which he's going to be quilting on. Oh, I forgot to mention I'm, I'm using our, our crosshair ruler. And that is our crosshair ruler to do his slick. markings. I mean, regardless of the sewing you're doing, it sure is nice to find center with those. Yeah, let's see if I've got the right X here. I'm going to go ahead and go below here and get that pin lined up with the X mark that I made. Yeah, that's going to be close enough for a demo. Okay, so this is going to be the, the pin that I use for the rotating templates that I'm using. And you're using an eight point today, crosshair ruler? You know, I'm, I'm not going to mark the quilt. Um, I certainly can, but I'm finding that the markings on these individual templates are uh, enough to give me an even number of rotations. So these little tiny, almost like lips. Oh, bring it down a little bit more. Oh, there it is. Yeah. These little uh, marks. So what I'm going to be using as I work my way around to uh, to line up this template. Rather than now, now a crosshair square works perfectly for this. You don't have to worry about these lines. All you have to do is just line this up with the mark you made with the crosshair ruler. So you're not making the eight point crosshair markings. What were you doing with the crosshair ruler then? Finding center. Oh, just finding just, center. Just finding there center. you go. So I went ahead and uh, there's a camera on, on this part of it. It is, okay. and we've got some really great lighting on that sewing machine. So I'm gonna bring this over and see if that balances the lighting on the sewing machine at all. So what I've done is find center and I'm gonna visually just find the center moving up this way. So uh, I'm even, I start at point A. If you haven't used this particular template before, I start at point A. Remote foot control. Oh, there it is. Okay. Start at point A, and I need to go ahead and bring my thread out. Mm -hmm. Got it. A little bit closer in here. I'm still all thumbs at this people. I'm just a, I'm kind of a new solar here. So I, I went ahead and I brought up uh, both both threads and move those out of the way. And I put this back on the hole right here. There we go. At that point north. And I go ahead and drop this. And this is about being able to move this quilt and the template. So I'm going to be holding this template out at the edges, keeping the staple tape nice and tight. And whoops, that's a little tight. That's a little Did you have maybe come in, please? My tension on my foot is a little bit too strong here. And um, Okay, you need yeah. to change your foot, right? Yeah, it's it's one of these settings. Sorry, people. I, uh, I think right now you're still on the A foot, so you just need to switch to a little bit. Did you ask her to come in? Because she did this for me in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. We do have the opportunity of getting a lot of different machines here. And uh, so oftentimes uh, they're very similar in some ways and not so similar in others. But uh, uh, this Genomi has got preset uh, height because they, they sell a ruler foot that's not adjustable right down here where your ruler foot might be. It's just adjustable on the screen. So we'll see if uh, she our way in. Yeah. So let's see. I'm trying to remember which one of these settings it was. I mean, I can't remember on, on setting the, uh, yeah. the height of the ruler foot yet. Yeah. It's bunching a little bit. It's down on the lower height, or even on the medium height. There it is. That's on medium. Uh -huh. Thank you. I like to slow down when I come to the top so I can change without too much extra thread. Now I've come to a stop at B, and what I'm going to do is rotate this template. So that the stitching that's coming through where these lips are right here are lining up. I'm going to do the next one. I 
rotate. You're again landing at my switching pad here. Now I'm checking my line here. You can see it's pointed pretty much down perfectly at the south position of my design, if you want to call it that. And as you know, with rotor work, the stitch length is completely up to the user, so how fast I move this. Yeah, you know, it's interesting now that we've showed um you know, Mindy doing some of the bulk work on um, from the binding to the um, to the sashing and that sort of thing um, without kind of a weightless quilter option. And now seeing you do this quilting on a weightless quilter option, you can really see like the ability to move and kind of more gracefully. <laughs> and freely with a weightless quilter. And I think the name really says a lot about, you know, really taking the weight off of, out of the, um, out of the, the weight element out of the equation and being able to really just freely move. Go ahead and do this full rotation. I'll show you that. And you just a little bit off. I got a thread stuck in there. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so that's that's our uh, design right there. And the rods are very flexible. Um, I can show you the tension really quick. You can kind of see how they're they're like tent poles, really. I think that they're they definitely worked with the the tent company, um, but you can see how they're flexing, just holding up that quilt right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they move really super freely. So you can see kind of from that angle how he's working. The second template is uh, the one that- Oh, let me go over. ahead and move back to that really quick here. Mm, oh, there's Wendy. Here you go, okay. So what I'm looking for there is my thumbtack, and I don't know if this is on camera, but it's right sticking up right here. Oh, it's yeah, kind of at the base of the camera, but yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and get some of this stuff out of the way. So is your needle still down? No, it's up, but I'm going to be pointing this on uh, the tack anyway. Okay. And and I'm moving away from um, where the original design was, so I'm not trying to tie the two together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and I determined, I made a mark on the 11 so I remembered that that was the size. Oh, that's, that's what, what the like ruler that. stickers are for, guys. Well, I like I like these templates because mm -hmm. they, they teach that you can use different, uh, you can make them different sizes, which is really fun. So on this particular template, we start at the top, and I've got it facing, hopefully, the north. And uh, let's go ahead and Someone was just asking what setting you ended up with. You ended up with the medium ruler work setting, right? Yeah, it came up as medium. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this this isn't that thick a quilt, but the mm -hmm. the the, um, the lower setting was such to where um, it was bunching a little bit, and it's not necessary as long as there's not too much room there, and you don't have any flagging, uh, and that can cause problems with stitches, you know, miss stitches and so forth. Sure. So I'm trying to get that. Uh, just move it out of there. There we go. I'm trying to pull that uh, bottom thread up. There it is, right there. Put this back on. So this is again spin and echo, right? Mm -hmm. Just spin and echo uh, number uh, fourteen. Let me see if and I can find it. There's a design. You can see if the camera's hitting that. You can see what it's going to look like at the end. Kind of a shocking starburst. Yeah. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. I guess I can start that a little more on center. 
That's better. Let's start right there. Keep your fingers out of the way. Now I'm not. I don't have a particular mark on here to stop at. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But this is just so simple. You just move it over to here, and depending on how detailed you want to be, this could stitch down the exact same path that it came up on. And so how would you know where to stop on that one? You know, what I think I'll probably do when I get into the bulk of this quilt is I'm going to put some marks on this template. Mm -hmm. Probably just a, you know, a felt pen mark. Or, or we can give you paper. some ruler stickers. Oh yeah, ruler stickers. I forgot mm -hmm. about those. But, yeah, those, those work good too. Mm -hmm. Noting I still have uh, my thumbtack up. I've still got it on the 11th Let me center. move this design down a little bit because this ruler's a little bigger. I want to make sure we get the full picture here. There you go. That's a better image, I think, of what you're doing. Like pulling feels a little tight there. I might have to readjust the. Uh, the oh, okay. Right well, I think it's good for now. I think I'm okay. I think it's really neat to see just how much fabric you're moving as you're going around and quilting this too. So I'm gonna try to give everybody that angle. You got a little bit off on that last one. Uh, there's a. There we go. I don't know if many, very many people know this, but my wife and I, Mindy, uh, we met in a fabric store in 1972, um, 71. And uh, we've been married for 47 years, and sewing's always been important to us. We, we went different directions for a number of years, and uh, she was in a bank, and I was uh, running a manufacturing company. So it's nice to be back in this industry and working with uh, fabrics and the and honestly, sewing and the fabulous people you, you meet uh, that love their craft. It's such an easy template design mm -hmm. too. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm using a brown bobbin thread so we can see the design a little bit better. I've got a pretty neutral color on the back. And uh, we no maybe noticed that it wasn't really showing up the way we wanted it to to show the quilting. So we changed to a brown. There we go. You've got a lot of seams in there. Yeah, I'm going to come clean with everybody. They t talk about pressing seams out and so forth. And when I was into my 400th piece, I stopped pressing, <laughs> splitting the hole and ironing them flat. So thank God I've got a big machine here to work with. I'd probably be tripping over the seams. Uh, I.e. the medium setting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then this is the last one right here. Oh, have, this I is where the rubber meets the road. We'll oh, see if they meet up here. It's not going to be perfect. It looks great. It is perfect. Look at that. And that is my design. I'm probably, Mindy, Mindy's going to help me with the border. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing around this, this border work. But you can see that. So the final size of the stitched out design that you just did was the 12 inch? You know, the, the, the grand total of this thing is at least, I haven't measured it, it's at least 12. And and I did notice. And yeah, I think that because you had it on the 12, you had, had the. It the I had it on the 11. 
So what's really cool about this template, and we're still kind of showing them on the screen here, oh, uh, right there, that you can go anywhere from a seven inch design all the way down to a 12 inch design on one template. Right, right. Which makes that really neat. And I did um, post a link to that uh, particular design, but all the Spen and Echo designs have that ability. So a lot of flexibility on the size of the design. And um, actually, I want to flip over and just kind of show them. Oh, you're showing them that. I like it. Okay, let's see if we can pull it up a little bit. And I don't know if you can get the full design out of it, but you know what? I'm going to um, have the camera right there, and then I'm going to get the light out because I think the light will help really see. I've got two extras here. I must have, I must have uh, twisted it wrong or something, but. That's supposed to be an even number, and looks like I've got a couple of uh, extras there, so I'll pull those out. Oh, but um, yeah, I must have. I must have just. You were just getting over. excited, talking and going. Well, right? this is my first time on camera. Yeah, I think you did pretty good. What do you guys think? So yeah, you can see it a lot better with the darker fabric, uh, the darker thread that is. And then on this side, it's just obviously we're getting it quilted so that it'll. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you've got that lighter thread on there. Yeah, now of course I'll pull these basting stitches out just as mm -hmm. soon as we're done. I love it. So then you're going to go ahead and tie off at the end of every design. Yeah, I have to tie off at the end, end of every design. I got to bring my my threads up and tie them, and then um, when this is when I've got all these these all over, and I'm not sure how many there are. There's probably at least twenty on the quilt. These, okay. These, then I don't have a lot of space between um, patterns. As a matter of fact. I think I'm, these are going to come together by about an inch in the center, and I'm just not going to care. But you could, I could have set this at a different size mm -hmm. and probably not have these overlap. But oh, uh, okay. I think it's going to be great, and I'm looking forward to giving this to my parents. They're in their late 80s and have a queen-size bed. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for showing us this. You can sure. kind of see, again, the weightless quilter all set up there. Um, this fancy clamp system oh, yeah. and, <laughs> and it does all staying in place. So that was the other thing we kind of were, were curious, you know, how is that going to work? So awesome. Well then let's go ahead and head back over. It looks like Mindy has moved from the sewing machine. So she must be on to ironing at this point. Thank you again for showing us all of that. That was awesome. I know we had a lot of people that were excited to see you quilting on a full size quilt. Okay, so we have Mindy in here, and she is ironing. Hi guys. All right, so yeah, I got this set up. I got the weight of my quilt on these uh, center tables here. I've got my ironing board at the same height, so it's carrying it. So I've just started uh, pressing. What I wanted to show you is this Ooh, corner. That corner. This is why I love this method, because... My corners come out perfect almost every time. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do here. So did you only have one meetup point? Oh, no. There were many, many strips. Oh, were there? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It just looked like one really long piece of binding. It so. was. But when you saw it, it was. Okay. It was. But before you saw it, it was many, many strips. So you sewed those together before you put yes. it on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You have your binding all, all length cut out. into strips and to cut to the, not the proper length, but you want to have more than what you think you need. Okay. One little tip that I didn't uh, talk about um, is at the end and let's see which end I guess it's the other end let's go to the other end let me show you the start and the stop uh, section of the binding which would be at this end should I bring it around uh, I can probably throw it over there okay so I'll, I'll twist it up here. Where am I? Here it is. Okay. So we want to find the start and the stop of that center hit right here. No, that's not it. It's always good when you can't find it. Let me just feel for it. Hmm.
That means you did it so good you don't know where. That kind of looks like a start-stop point. That was uh, one of the additions. Well, maybe it is on the other. Maybe it is at this end. I thought I did it at the bottom end. Oh, this is the bottom end. Never mind. Sorry. I got mixed up with Jim that is on. Okay, so we're going to find where the stop start was. Well, what I was going to say is not that important, but Clearly, I did such a great job, you can't even find it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I did. I started at one of the ends. Anyway, bottom line is you uh, leave your uh, end long enough so that when you come to your uh, beginning part, you just tuck the width of your sashing. So you cut it the width of the sashing longer than, you, uh, than where it would butt up against. Mm -hmm. So you tuck it in. Okay. Oh, so you have a little tuck in into the bind yes. uh, into the binding area. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's just a little thicker there, then. Correct. And that's why I'm surprised I can't find it. But so it's know. a really clean look, though. It is a really clean look. So let me just because so and everybody was so excited to see the whole quilt, and I know it's kind of jumbled still, but you're getting the idea. Well, we're getting closer. We're getting so close. All right. So I'm gonna just rather than try to. Um, do it clean. I'm just going to tuck it over itself. So now all I'm going to be doing is taking this and I'm going to keep a pair of scissors because, you know, as you work with fabric, you get a lot of like little loose things. And I find if I can cut those off as I'm doing this, then when I'm binding, I'm not fussing with all of these loose uh, threads and stuff. Oh, and having them stick out? Yeah. It's just, you know, and some some fabrics are worse than others. And I will vacuum the room when I'm done here. <laughs> we were worried that you were just making a huge mess. I know, yeah. She's just tossing it onto the floor. Okay, so here we go. So what I'm going to do, I've got my, um, as I said, my, what I call my wonder clips right here. Mm -hmm. and I'm just going to take this. I've already uh, pressed it on the front. Now I'm just taking it and pressing it. Just going to cover the seam, oh, okay. seam allowance. And that's when you start clipping it with your Wonder Clips. That is correct. Okay. So now I will just put these clips and I'll just go like this. And I'm gonna, this is the side I'm going to be sewing on. So this is the side that I care about in terms of when I'm clipping. And I don't clip that close together because as I'm going along, if I need more uh, clip, then I just take some of the extras I've already used and move them to where I need it to be. Okay, so let's get right in here. Down here. And then on this corner, what I want to do, I, I want to consistently miter the corners, okay? So let me take all these extra threads out of here first. And I'm just going to clip a little bit of this excess. Oh, just cut it. Yeah. Just to make less bulk where you don't need the bulk. Okay, so like that. Okay, let me make sure I've got it on the sewing or on the uh, ironing board enough for me to work with. All right, so let's come down here. And normally I like to take the sides and have the sides go in like this and take the ends 
and go over the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my mitered corner on the back side is going to look like that. we go okay so now let's go ahead and take the clips clip that and we'll just do one clip right there and these are gonna stay huh yeah but here's how it looks like on the front okay looks awesome so that's the binding so look. that's gonna be the final binded look everyone mm -hmm. sans the clips all right. Well, I love it. We can't wait to see the final, final product. Is this going to be um, on a bed here soon? Or what are we thinking? Uh, I'm thinking that it probably is going to be in the bedroom that Jerry's been quilting in. Okay. I'm going to put it on that bed. Going to keep the dogs out of there so they don't scratch on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought I already have some orange lamps in there and that'd be perfect place for it. Yeah. Excellent. We can show them you next week while it's on the bed. Well, I, I'm going to probably be quilting from the office next week. Oh, too bad. Yeah. So, sad. so um, the challenge for me is that I'm going to be uh, quilting on that new um, handy quilter uh, cutie frame, uh, finishing the mystery sampler quilt that uh, we're going to be framing up. So um, that'll be fun to watch and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. I'll happily have some practice before then too. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone. And thank you to Mindy and Jerry, our quilting team here uh, for bringing all of those amazing expertise to us today. And um, again, like comment and share to win one of our mystery sampler uh, binding tool or one of our binding tools by Westerly Design. And uh, we'll look forward to next week. Thanks everyone. Bye guys. Bye. And let's see if I can end that right there.